Welcome back, I'm Calvin, AKA Statue Fanatic here with another review. And today we're gonna to take a look at a piece that I have waited a very, very long time to get. I got it about a month ago, but it has been so crazy busy that I have not had a chance to review this piece yet. So now that I have a chance to review it, this, my friend, is the one third prime one statue of the Batman who laughs. And that's where I'll start with a little bit about the Batman who laughs and some recommended readings. If you want to dive into how this character has turned the DC universe upside down, this character has, an, has arguably become one of the most exciting and interesting characters to be introduced in the DC universe in more than a decade. And his appearance and storylines had major implications throughout the DC multiverse. As the name implies, he is a hybrid of both Batman, who, has, who we know as Bruce Wayne, and his arch enemy, the Joker. And he is also a member of the Dark Knights. The character's name and characteristics are inspired by a silent film released in 1928 titled The Man Who Laughs. DC introduced the Dark Knights in Dark Days, the casting number one, but the first full appearance of the Batman who laughed was in Teen Titans number 12 in December of 2017. The character was created by writer Scott Snyder and artist Greg Capullo. This character storyline is an incredible mind-bending ride that could take an hour or more to explain, so I will try and keep this very brief because it's the statue that we really, really want to talk about, right? This character starts off as a version of Batman from Earth-22, and in that reality, the Joker learns the identity of Batman and ends up killing nearly all of Batman's rogue gallery. He goes on a murder spree in Gotland City, he murders kids in front of their parents, he releases the toxin that turn him into the Joker. I know, this is so crazy, you have to read the comic to untangle all of this. He and Batman duke it out and Batman becomes exposed to a purified form of the chemicals that slowly turns him into this new fused version of the Batman and the Joker, the Batman who laughs. Now that you know a little bit about this character's history, like I said, he is probably one of the most um, infamous characters right now in the uh, DC universe and one of my favorite characters or emerging characters from the DC universe. So now, you might notice that there's a different scene around me and everything. And uh, I'll probably be doing quite a few videos from this particular vantage point because in the house I have all the grandkids, everybody's here. So they're having a great time in the house. And for those of you who do YouTube videos, you kind of know what that's like. There's no door that they won't knock on. I just happen to have the back porch locked so they can't come out. But, well, this is my first one third piece from Prime One. I have been wanting to get a one third piece for a couple of years, but never knew what I wanted to pull the trigger on because I know I won't be like a lot of other collectors that really collect a lot of one third pieces. There's no way I would be able to do that. So the piece that I get, I wanted it to be one that I really, really enjoyed. And so I saw this statue at San Diego Comic-Con several years ago and fell in love with it. I actually did a video that you can check out here at Statue Fanatic. I did a video of the statue that I saw there. I was so impressed, so blown away by that particular piece until I immediately went home. As soon as it came up for pre-order, I ordered the statue. And I've been waiting to get it and I finally got it about a month ago, like I said, and I am super, super excited, super impressed with this piece. And we're gonna go over as much of this statue as we can because it's one of those pieces that you could just spend a, a lot of time just sitting out here with a friend and talking about all the different elements of this piece because it's that good of a piece in terms of sculpt detail and a fan piece. And when I say that, I mean, I love it when companies really nail what fans would want in a piece of their favorite character or a character like this. And I think Prime One did an excellent job doing that. So without further ado, let's just get started. First of all, I'll just do it once around out here so you can kind of see um, what this guy looks like. Now, the elements of the statue is this. You've got like five main pieces to this statue. You've got, of course, the Batman who laughs right here. And you've got these three Robins that have been turned into his minions there. And then you have the base here that is epic all in itself because when you turn this around, you can see here, it says the Batman who laughs. And then it's got all these chains all around it and all that kind of great stuff. So starting off with the very top of the statue, we'll start with the portrait. I've seen a number of paintings from Greg Capolo and others of the Batman who laughs. And I think if you take a, if you combine all of those different images that you've seen of this character, this portrait cap captures that character just beautifully. I mean, the sinisterness of him, everything about that character and what he brings to the DC universe is captured in this portrait. I mean, the, as he is menacing, 
he is just pure evil <laughs> when you look at this picture and it definitely shines through here so a couple of things about it you can you notice that his teeth I mean sculpted extremely well and he has blood and flesh what it looks like drooling out of his mouth it's just absolutely gruesome uh, and that's what makes him such a cool character in my opinion and so as you turn it around he has the uh, Batman who Batman who laughs cow on and I'm gonna just send a shout out to JR again because in our chats on that geek show he's always talking about the paint job on prime one pieces and so does mac mac uh just posted a video of this guy too matt from mac collections and he's always talking about prime one and how well they are in terms of a company as well so this is my first prime one piece and one of the things that stands out is just how beautiful it's sculpted i mean the detail is just absolutely amazing and we've taken a look at the portrait but when you take a look down the front of his body here you can see that he has this leather-like outfit on that has buckles and all those things all around it. You can see that, which is really cool. You can see some stitching and things like that around here. Uh, and then here in his chest, and then also here uh, on his legs, it looks like there's more of this blood and flesh type stuff coming from underneath the, uh, the jacket that he's wearing. And as I turn it around, you can see this just really cool design and stitching. And I think they captured the character from the comic book so, so fantastically. Just super impressed with that. And on the back, the same thing. You have some more of that blood, this here mesh stuff, what looks like blood and flesh coming off of there. But I'm going to jump all over the place for this one thing because it just keeps coming to mind. So I have to, to mention this. And like it was something that JR said a number of times, and it is the paint application on Prime One pieces. Now, this is the only piece that I've ever owned. I've seen some at cons and they look great too, but you can't get really close a lot of times or really do a whole lot of inspecting. But I've had this piece, like I said, for a month and I've had a chance to look at it quite intensely. Um, and I have not been able to find one thing that I would call a paint issue or flaw. This is crazy and most people say no statues are perfect and I agree that there's got to be some things on here that weren't intentional, but I, I can't find them. But when you look at the stitching, for example, uh, we'll go zoom in a little bit or take a look at the stitching on the cowl here. Every individual stitch, I mean, as tiny as those stitches are, you don't see any spillover or paint or anything like that. And, and I've got a really nice camera and I tried to get some really tight pictures to give you guys some idea of what I'm talking about. And the same thing when you look at the flesh that's showing through the costume where there's some stitching here, it's on his arms, it's on his legs. You can see that stitching there. But again, there is nothing that shows where the paint was uh, done sloppily or anything like that. I mean, it's almost like a, a perfect paint job on here. Um, and then the same thing with the, the shading and everything that's on him. When you look at the shading on his face, for example, that it's just the paint, it just looks amazing. It gives it such depth, such dimension, detail. I absolutely love what they've done to this. And the same thing with the painting on the cowl, it gives it a real brush metal look looks pretty sinister and then as we look at some of the more details and uh, like i said i'll be jumping all over the place because i'm just pretty excited about this we look at some of the other detail let's let's talk about let's say his arms or his hands for example that are holding the chains uh, again with the paint application on his fingernails looks flawless and then as you look at his hands you can see the veins i mean just very very meticulously sculpted throughout his hands here and as you look at that you can just see how the shading and the paint see you can see the greenish tones sort of like the blood running through his veins it's just a really amazing job done here you can see in the back of the um, coat that he's wearing as well you can see some of that same red bloodish looking tint in the back there more of that really cool stitching and then as you look at his boots his shoestring seems to be dipped in blood matter of some kind and then tied this actually comes off but um you can see here there's a lot of detail in that the wrinkles in his boots and the um stitching again done extraordinarily well and now we're going to talk a little bit about the robins and if i have to jump back to the other part i'll do that as well but we'll talk a little bit about the robins each of these little minions are painted as exquisitely as batman who laughs is done himself uh, so looking at any of these guys here you can see where the design and the scope and the detail in it is just so 
minute and there's such attention to detail it's just really awesome now each of the robins are wearing a leather chain that hooks to this and of course you can see where the batman who laughs is holding them holding them as if they were leashes is basically what they are it was pretty cool but i did have one disappoint and that is one of the leather straps were not in the box and i looked everywhere and if you guys that have gotten this you know the level leather strap should be in the plastic bag with some of the other accessories and there was only two leather straps in the bag to put around these two guys' neck and so i kind of just have the chain wrapped around the neck i contacted sideshow and they said that they were completely out of any inventory to replace it so they offered me to return it or they offered to give me a monetary discount. So of course I wanted to keep the piece. I wasn't going to go through that whole shebang of returning it and all that. So I kept it and it still doesn't look bad. And this piece is one that I can see many ways that I can get that fixed and um, get another piece to, to go there. Um, again, back to the Robins, uh, the legs, costume, everything. Check out the detailing in the legs of veins, the same thing, the sinister vampiric, vampire-like figures they're just absolutely amazing the paint application the color on them all fits uh, so you have robin with the red and the yellow and everything but because he's in this vampire type state if you will this monstrous state all of the clothing has take taken on the same tone of the scene here where it's not clean at all it's kind of dirty and dingy and maybe almost like they've been living in a gutter or something it's just really fantastic the way that this is all set up and this is such a massive piece i did bring a tape measure out and um i'm gonna go ahead and measure this here to see just about how tall this guy is so from the bottom of base to the top of his head he's about 34 inches tall which is quite tall for a statue and i said this is the only third scale statue that i've gotten which is true but if you saw one of my videos where i did the transformer optimus prime uh statue that particular statue is as big as this statue. It's just a different scale because the Transformers are so much larger. And this is about 18 inches wide from here. And then as far as depth is another 18 inches wide. So 18 here, 18 there, and 34-ish tall. Huge, huge piece. Now on the back of it, you have, uh, we'll talk about the base here. And I'll start with the back of the base because this was my favorite part when I did the, uh, the video. This looks so much like metal. This looks like a bunch of crowbars right here. And then you have the Batman who laughs right engraved here, which is really cool. And then on the back of it, you have the bat symbol with blood running down, almost like vines running up or running down. But they all look like some type of blood and flesh matter instead of vines of any type of vegetation running all around the, the uh, base. And then you have these particular figures here there's one two three of those almost like uh gargoyles that have also been transformed into the batman who laughs um theme or motif i can go on and on about the statue but like i said it is worth the pickup if you are a huge batman who laughs fan the only issue here is going to be by far where you store this uh, I have such respect for some of these guys who, who collect nothing but these one-third pieces because I have no idea what type of house you live in to be able to store all of these, JR. Uh, I guess he lives in the basement and his statues live all over the house. But that's about all I have for this. I can't think of anything else that I want to talk about about this piece, but please stay tuned because I will be doing a couple of more reviews of some statues that I've gotten in over the past few weeks that I haven't had a chance to do any reviews on. And remember, my friends, to always, always collect what you like and not the hype. And until next time, peace.